Um, joined here on the stage by Catherine Styler. Is that my pronouncing right? Yeah, Catherine Styler, who is the, the CEO of Creative Commons. Um, and Creative Commons is uh, a super cool um, group with a super cool mission that is really almost like Web3 before Web, like 20 years before Web3 became a thing. Uh, Creative Commons was, or, 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 or uh, was sort of uh, living out the mission and, and living out the dream and carrying the, the torch, so to speak. So um, Catherine has some remarks for us. She, uh, she's come all the way from... Where are you? You're based in Europe, or are you based in the U.S. Here? I'm in the U.S. Oh, she's in the U.S. Okay, so she's not coming from that far away. So it's, uh, <laughs> but anyway, well, well, thank you so much, Catherine. I uh, would love to hop over to the podium here, and uh, we'd love to to hear what you have prepared for us here. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here, and thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about sharing. So. Sharing matters, and thanks to the digital revolution, we share things like never before, from scientific research to family photos, from day-to-day -day life to college courses, and all instantaneously. And the variety and volume of sharing today was unimaginable even just a decade ago. And now social media and publishing platforms, smartphones, cheap data, and expanded internet access have enabled more sharing, both in forms that bring us joy and connection, and in the spread of lies, on hate, and in misinformation. So our digital life really reflects human nature in all its glorious complexity, highlighting both the good and the bad. And all this sharing has created a flood of new copyrighted works. Practically everyone now is a published author, many times over when we think about all our social media postings. But here's the key question. Is the current copyright paradigm working in our interest? Copyright law is complex, different in different countries, and stands often as a barrier to creators, not an enabler. And copyright is a strand of intellectual property law that affects us all, helping decide what we can read, what we can listen to, what we can watch, and what we can share online. Copyright impacts creators, innovators, and users of content. And we all agree that creators should be fairly rewarded and remunerated for their works. The economic argument for copyright that stronger protection for authors' rights will inevitably lead to more gains for individual creators may seem convincing on its face. However, in practice, the economic argument to expand copyright does not turn out to be persuasive because extending copyright terms from just a few decades to life plus 70 years has not materially increased earnings for the majority of individual creators. Instead, copyright has generated greater monopolies, benefiting select corporations whose profit motives lift only a few star players. The vast majority of creators do not experience the benefits of the current copyright system firsthand. When culture is paywalled, rented, and held for profit, when knowledge is locked away, when our libraries are threatened and educators diminished, there's a chill cast on how our society interoperates and ultimately on the health of our democracy. Onerous copyright rules, benefiting the few and not the many, obstruct our access to culture, the knowledge we share and the society we care about. We now see new technologies and practices entering our digital world from artificial intelligence and machine learning to the creation of NFTs, as you all know so well. All of these emerging technologies intersect with copyright, but will they provide an opportunity to reshape what it means to create and what it means to consume knowledge and culture? Or will they instead provide new ways for copyright's entrenched beneficiaries to protect their status quo? Taking AI as an example, who will decide which works will train artificial intelligence and who will control the works that AI creates from the raw materials of our human knowledge and culture? A new model is surfacing on the distributed web, a model where people can get credit and reward for their creativity and share their works openly with everyone rather than lock, lock them away with the dusty, rusty keys of copyright. This model works by bringing together new D-Web tools for distribution, ownership and compensation with existing tools to open copyright, the licenses and legal tools of Creative Commons, which we call CC. In order to empower individual creators and safeguard democratic societies, CC has developed an alternative system built on top of existing all rights copyright rules that enables a commons of knowledge and culture which is freely accessible to everyone, everywhere. 
We offer a set of open licenses and public domain tools, which some of you are familiar with, free for anyone to use. A different system where creators get to make their own choices about which rights they want to keep and which rights they want to share. By making their own choices for sharing, creators can reach new and expanded audiences and people across the planet can better access works and ideas to build new creations. As we know, creativity doesn't come out of nowhere. All creativity is based on creativity, just as all knowledge is based on knowledge. And over the past 20 years, CC licenses have become the global standard for sharing content for creators, researchers, educators, librarians, archivists and governments. We now conservatively estimate that over 2.5 billion works are shared via CC, and that number is growing. And if I can just share with you, when CC was first created, the ambition was to get 1 million works uptaked by a by CC license. Now, 20 years on, we have 2.5 billion works, and that is, as I say, conservative. So let's just turn a little moment to better sharing. What do we actually mean by this? CC's strategic shift away from sharing just for sharing's sake to working for better sharing helps us address the careful balance between sharing that's in the public interest and sharing which is not. This is important at a time when all the benefits that the internet has brought to us seem to be quickly forgotten, and the predominant narrative is around harm rather than public interest. So the D-Web movement connects to key values and how we think about better sharing, sharing that is inclusive, just and equitable, where everyone has wide opportunity to access content, to contribute their own creativity, and to receive recognition and rewards for their contributions. Sharing that's reciprocal, where we rebalance the skewed world we live in now, in which a few produce and profit from the works that the, 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 the many consume. Sharing that's sustainable, where open participation in the public commons is the default rather than the exception. At CC, we want to shift the narrative back to the importance of why sharing matters and how we can do it better. That's why we are an organizing partner in the nascent movement for better internet. Thanks very much to the Filecoin Foundation for funding. And we're actively advocating to ensure that human values and public interests are front and center in our online world. Please come and join the movement to help shape these values. And as the distributed web movement grows, we're also bringing the better sharing point of view and the public interest voice to conversations like this one, where people are shaping how this new paradigm will grow and evolve. We do the same with communities engaged with other emerging technologies too. So, stewarding the commons. I can't come and talk to a group like this without saying something about the infrastructure. We can't ignore the infrastructure we need to support better sharing. Time and time again, we see the essential public infrastructure that supports the digital commons taken for granted. And it's almost that it's invisible. And we really have a responsibility to make that invisible very visible. And at a time when the public interest often stands in direct contrast to the commercial interests of the creative industries and large tech firms, we need common investment in the structures that underpin the open commons, like creative commons. If we're not careful, the internet will just be a collection of those company towns where you get paid in company script, can only buy from the company store and only hear the company line and see the company point of view. And without the commons infrastructure like CC supports, we'll all be poorer, less open and fundamentally we will be in a less democratic society. In the D-Web movement, we see new models for collective and cooperative funding and governments, governance. And these new models offer opportunities to augment and maybe even replace existing support for public infrastructure. But we must challenge ourselves to show how these new models will intersect with and improve on the government, philanthropic and non-profit organisations and resources that we rely on and how to serve the public interest. So let's have a think for a moment about, and I'm conscious, I've got six more minutes, is the, is it? We, about the D-Web and the Commons. We can already see some specific areas where the D-Web movement and better sharing for the public commons come together. Perhaps we can see these as some of the opportunities that are ours to address. The first opportunity may be obvious, but it has yet to be fully worked out. In a D-Web vision, where digital artifacts are permanently linked to their essential metadata, we see the opportunity for tighter connections between works their authorship, their provenance, and their intellectual property terms. If you look around the internet today, this is all rather messy. And we can challenge ourselves to clean up this mess in the distributed web. The second opportunity is perhaps much more obscure, 
While we might imagine that the D-Web disrupts the reigning intellectual property system for the better, in fact, what we often see is that the all rights reserved by default regime is still very much at play in the D-Web works, like in copyright debates around NFTs. And what's more, lots of confusion circulating about how NFTs connect to the intellectual property rights of underlying works. While it might seem that owning an NFT somehow magically grants IP rights to a work it references, it, instead it seems that the same IP property complexities that we see with traditional practices still exist in the distributed web. And adding to the confusion, we already see different, incompatible, and sometimes dubious IP practices spreading across the distributed web. In this new world, we have the opportunity to do better by adopting and, if needed, updating powerful tools that we know already work, like CC standards, open licensing, and public domain dedications that give everyone clear and consistent guidelines about their rights. The third, and maybe the biggest opportunity, goes to the heart of what better sharing is itself, how to ensure that the D-Web does foster a better public commons than we already have. And I see several challenges. One is ease of use. It will be hard to have an inclusive, just, and equitable commons when it's difficult and confusing to create, to share, and to reuse. Closely related to this is interoperability. In a decentralized paradigm, we also need to make sure that people and information can cross over to different communities and collections without great friction. Another is credibility. It's a huge distraction to the benefits we might realize with the distributed web when there are so many scandals in the crypto world. And so beyond that, how do we meet challenges like these and at the same time ensure that the D-Web is truly decentralized and doesn't concentrate money and power and control in the hands of dominant players, whether those players are newly minted or the same old guard? I look around here now and I see people already thinking about these and discussing and taking action to meet these challenges and realize these opportunities. I'd really love to hear what you're all seeing as opportunities in front of you and the challenges we need to meet. So, in conclusion, above all, I look forward to working with you all to make better sharing fundamental in the distributed web and a better internet. And I'm on three minutes and 27 seconds. So, thank you. Thank you.